What is going on ladies and gentlemen? My name is AJ Good. Welcome to the House of Masks and today we are going to be converting this $20 Michael Myers half mask into a different mask and I'm not even sure what yet. I don't have a game plan. Please excuse my voice. I am sick. I've been laying in bed for the past two days. It's been fucking terrible. I could not stand to just lay in bed anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and try to make this video. So supplies that you're going to need for this one. First, probably a foam head, some sort of armature, something like that. That way you're not painting on a mask that's constantly moving and you don't have to hold it like this or whatever. You can just put it over the armature. Easy. Three, four, five dollar head. Simple as that. You're going to need some foam brushes, almost like sponges. Paint brushes of all shapes and sizes. Scissors and or X-Acto knife. Paint. Needle and thread. Duct tape. And our secret weapon, Plasti Dip. Clear Plasti Dip. And then of course the most important piece, this Michael Myers mask. This is a Trick or Treat Studios Econo Myers or Myers face mask or whatever. It doesn't have any hair. Literally just the neck, ears, and face. Nothing special. I spent 20 bucks on this, and the goal of this video was not to convert it into any sort of clown because I always seem to end up making a clown mask. Alright, first things first. We're going for a skinned face mask. Um, so we are going to cut where he would be cut if he was a skinned face, and then we'll lay a base coat down on him. And there's no real um, right way to do this cutting. You just need to see what you want cut, maybe look at some reference photos or something like that and go from there and yeah so I'm just gonna start cutting I'm gonna cut the neck and ears off and if we need to reattach those later we can it actually helps to reattach them because it looks more gruesome and remember this is literally a skin face mask so it doesn't have to be perfect probably the uh, weirder looking and more jagged the better Okay, so the ears are gone, the neck is gone, we are left with this. Now we need to cut the mouth open. Okay, this is going to be a skin face mask, so if you want to make the cut, However you feel like making it. As you can see, I put a little slit on this side and just a smaller little slit right there. Now the eyes. Okay, so there's our eye cuts. As you can see, once again, one is uneven and has like a little weird slit right there. Now we need to base coat them. So we're going to stick them on this head and start painting. We're going to start uh, base coating him just with a skin tone acrylic paint and the reason that we can use acrylic paint is because of plastic dip here. So just start brushing over it. doesn't have to be real pretty because we're going to stain the mask up later anyways. Now that he is all based out we're going to give it a minute and then we'll come back in with some darker tones, some blacks and reds and then we will start with washes. Now that that's nice and dry, we're going to go back in with a smaller brush and some black acrylic paint. We're going to dabble around anywhere that there would be a hole or an opening on the mask itself. So around the eyes, around the nose holes, there by the lips, and then around the edges won't hurt. You can just pretty much wing it, go wherever you think it would look good. And now we're going to let that dry. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but this is all about layers, so we're getting there. Okay, so next I have mixed up some brown acrylic paint. Once again, this is personal preference. See how this looks almost like poop? I've mixed enough brown acrylic paint with warm water to get a nice, gross, poopy, nasty consistency. And we're going to take our foam brushes here and basically just dabble all over the mask. This is called a wash, and it's really going to make a lot of the detail in this sculpt pop, even though it is a Myers mask. There's not a whole lot of detail, but it will bring some uh, realism to the gross, nasty skin face. So 
So now we've got a face that looks like it just came out of a butthole. We're going to immediately, while that is wet, start wiping. Not even wiping, just kind of patting with a paper towel. Patting it dry. Now you can see what we're working with here and the direction that this whole thing is going to be going in. We will let this dry and we will come back in and add some reds. And then it's all about detailing. Now I've just poured a little bit of my modeling paint into the, this little cup here. This is the same modeling paint that I used on the Joey's for the blood. And I'm just going to take my sponge, dabble it around in here, and uh, we're just going to kind of follow where we put the black. And just kind of dabble it on there. And you don't want to go super heavy with this because you want your black to show up through. So as that's setting, we're just going to take another one of our smaller brushes and dip it in there. And we will start getting some blood drips going down where different holes would be. Because if this really was a skin face, it's going to bleed quite a bit. So we'll just let that kind of naturally drip down. Um, it will dry, but it will always look wet. Another thing that you can use for that effect is perma blood. I've never personally used it, but I have friends that swear by it. I'm sure that the process would be exactly the same. So yeah, we'll let that dry and come back to it here in just a second. While we're waiting for that to dry, we can actually take this neck piece, the neck and ears that we cut off earlier, and start cutting those up in little weird shapes. Um, and we can add those to the neck again. We'll cut them in the, in the shapes that we want, and then we will sew them back onto the neck. And it'll give it a very odd, eerie feel. So I'm just now realizing how terribly lit this video is, and I'm not sure why, because I filmed a million of these little tutorials and videos and stuff down here in this room, and for some reason it's just like ridiculously bright and uh, I don't know why so I do apologize for that I'm sorry so the last thing I did was mixed up some of the modeling paint with some of the acrylic paint both red and then I put a little bit of hot water in there with them mixed them up and now we're gonna do one last wash on top of all of this that we put down so far and it'd be the same deal as last time you just want to dab it on there and let it run down the mask let it soak into every little piece of the mask you can think of and we're going to be dabbing it off so there's no such thing as too much here. Alright, so I went ahead and dabbed it off. And as you can see, it's all dry now. And it looks like it has so many layers of just nasty, filthy, bloody grossness built up on it. And that is the exact look that we're going for here. So... Next up is going to be stitching, and uh, don't hurt yourselves when you do this, but stitching is going to give it a super cool look. What leather face mask can you think of that didn't have stitches in it? Okay, please excuse the noise, but uh, since the last thing we're going to do is stitch this mask up, we might as well go ahead and plasti dip these layers. So I brought them outside, going to go ahead and plasti dip the mask and the two neck pieces. And that'll be that. So now that all of the layers of paint and the Plasti Dip are dry, we can start with stitching with our needle and thread. Once again, this is all personal preference thing. I'm sure that yours doesn't look exactly like mine, and that's a good thing because this is just a do-it-yourself, one-of-a-kind custom piece. I'm going to start down here where this rip is with the lips and I'll probably go all the way across because I want the mouth to be sewn shut. I've always liked the look of stuff like that so that's what I'm gonna go for. Here 
And as you can see, I've got this all stitched up all the way across. And I'm going to go in and do this little eye area. And then I'll be attaching some of the neck. As you can see here, we've got this gross little neck attached. We've got the mouth all stitched up, this little eye piece, and then I threw in just a random slit right there. And you guys can do whatever you want. Um, like I said, this is all personal preference, so do whatever you want to do to your mask. Alright, I have added it to where I think it needs to be, and you won't have to plasti dip this again because uh, that uh, modeling paint is actually pretty flexible, and it'll actually dry to look wet, so no more plasti dip, don't want to ruin the stitching that we just put in there. That's pretty much it, we're going to add the straps on and then we'll take it outside and see what we've got. So we still got the straps from the original mask, we're just going to rip those out of there and reuse them. You're going to want to take your X-Acto knife and put some holes in it right where you think that the strap is going to need to be. I usually run diagonal with the uh, eyes because the strap is going to be going right over your ear. So I would say right here is a good spot for that to be. You cut a small slit in this big enough that you'll be able to fit that piece of elastic through and put it in from the outside. That way when you put it in we can secure it on the inside and you won't even notice um, like a knot or anything like that. Now that this is pulled through, as you can see we've got it kind of looped like that, we're going to actually stitch the elastic to itself just like that. And it's going to be kind of hard for me to film and let you guys see it so I'll just give the best example that I can. Just run two or three little loops of stitching through there and uh, you should be good to go. So hopefully this video didn't suck so bad that you don't have a completed mask right now. I know it was kind of choppy, and I know that the lighting wasn't too great. Uh, I do apologize for that. I have been incredibly sick, like I explained at the beginning of the video, and uh, I'm just kind of dying right now, so I hope that this was put together well enough for you guys to enjoy it. Um, if you guys did make a mask based off of this video, tag me in it on Instagram, let me see, or upload a video and send me the link. I will definitely check it out. We'll take this outside and throw it on and see how it looks more. Don't be afraid to add your own stuff to this. Just because I'm finished with mine doesn't mean that you have to be finished with yours. That's what this is all about. I know a lot of you guys don't have a ton of money to throw around. And uh, if you want something custom for Halloween, this is kind of the way to go. So have fun. I hope you enjoyed and we will see you guys tomorrow.